question when we talk about rebalancing is why. Why do we need to rebalance? Why bother? And there's a few reasons. The first one is risk management. The second one is buying low and selling high because that's you know, the ultimate golden rule of investing. And by rebalancing systematically, we can put that on autopilot and not be subject to the instincts that tell us to do the opposite of what's the right thing to do. And the third one is to maintain your standard deviation within your portfolio because you, know, you want to stay consistent with your investment objective. And if you don't rebalance, your standard deviation can get drastically changed. And we're going to look at that as well. So with risk management, risk can be controlled by curtailing and overweight, overweighting and underweighting of funds in a portfolio. So when, when things get overweighted or underweighted, we use rebalancing to fix that problem. Uh, building portfolios from lowly correlated assets and rebalancing allows for effective diversification and reduces volatility in the portfolio while still achieving the returns that you want. So if you take the, just as an example of diversification and how we reduce reduce standard deviation and increase, increase return, we have our U.S. large portfolio 100% in the S&P 500, and you see the return is 10%, and the standard deviation here is 18.3. If we diversify 30% of that into international large stocks, we end up with an, a return of 10.5, so we've increased our return by a half percent. Our standard deviation has dropped a little. And then if we actually take that 30% of international and put 10% of that into sm international small companies, we actually bump up our return to 11%. So we've jumped all the way up a full percentage point from all U.S., but we've actually kept our standard de deviation essentially the same. So we're increasing return, keeping our risk consistent. So then we're going to buy. So that's how we do that part. When we go to the buy low and sell high, market movements provide opportunities for asset classes when they are underweighted and overvalued to sell securities when they are overweighted and undervalued. So this is what we want to look at right here is from 1977 to 2002, this is the traditional 60-40 mix with large U.S. 60%, 40% of fixed income. This is the portfolio return that you would expect over that period of time with and without rebalancing. The key here is that with rebalancing, your return ends up being around 11.5% with a standard deviation of 11.5%. But if you never rebalance that entire time, you still get essentially the same return, 11.4%, but your standard deviation goes up almost 3%. So not rebalancing bumps up your standard deviation. So that's why I want to make sure that we're consistently rebalancing. And the time frame doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you do it quarterly or semi-annually, as long as it's getting done. And asset allocation works. Obviously, we, you know, this is a conversation we have all the time. Diversification, asset allocation, that's what works in a portfolio. We want to maintain the criteria that we set at the beginning and keep it consistent. So there's several different ways, and we're going to talk about rebalancing with using multidimensional funds. And this happens on three levels. It happens at the fund level on a daily and monthly basis. It happens in the multidimensional funds on a daily basis. And then it happens at the investor level on a quarterly basis. So we're going to look at how that happens in each one of those areas. At the fund level, this is the structure of your basic mutual fund. You have the mutual fund, and the fund holds different securities directly within the fund. These funds are monitored daily to adjust and rebalance security holdings and weightings appropriately. So as money comes in, they're rebalanced. Um, and then they're monitored quarterly for changes in the breakpoints for size and value as the market fluctuates. Because in a structured fund, we have different portions allocated to different asset classes, and we want to make sure that they're still meeting those criteria. So for example, in the U.S. equity portfolio, 15% of the portfolio is allocated toward the U.S. microcap. And within that sector, within that asset class, there's initially 3,000 candidates for that part of the portfolio. But after we do the screening process, which is a little complicated and we're not going to go through that now, but after we screen these assets, we actually come up with about a little over 2,000 assets that qualify for this portion of the portfolio. And those things can change over time. So we, re, we are reevaluating those on a quarterly basis to make sure that all the assets within that category are still meeting all of the criteria. And the point is, is that you don't have to have all of the funds in the entire universe as long as you have a, a large amount. You want to have, kind of want to weed out the garbage, basically, and have a good showing, 2,000 out of 3,000 
potential candidates. So, and we'll, those are reevaluated on a quarterly basis. The second level, within the multidimensional funds, we want to talk about what is a fund of funds, because we talk, a mutual fund holds securities directly. A fund of funds is an investment company or a mutual fund that inv invests in other funds rather than buying those securities directly. So if we, um, and the benefit of this is that you can achieve better diversification by using the, possibly by using the fund of funds. The structure of the fund of funds works like this. We have the multidimensional fund, and then that fund actually holds individual mutual funds, but the mutual funds are the ones that directly hold the individual securities. So that is how the breaks the breakdown works in a fund of funds. So for example, a fixed income fund of funds has a fund for each of these portions, one year fixed income, five year global, treasuries, five year government, two year global. Each of those is a structured market fund within the funds. Same thing with US equities. We have a portion allocated to large cap, large companies, micro cap, small US, and small value each of those, a structured market fund. Again, this is repeated in the international portion of the portfolio, where we have the international equity portion is international value, small value, Japanese, emerging markets, emerging markets value. All of this is contained within one fund, so you get better diversification in one package. So when we're rebalancing in the multidimensional funds, Trading at this level is done daily to accommodate for net inflows or outflows of all the assets deposited or withdrawn, as well as market fluctuations. So those are looked at on a daily basis. So if you take this, when you're, when you're looking at a balanced portfolio using a fund of fund structure, and you have your fixed income fund of funds, your international equity, and your U.S. equity, at the beginning of a year, and this is our year of you know, January 1st, 2008, we have a 50-50 mix here, 50% 50 in fixed income, 20% international, 30% U.S. equity. By the end of that year, based on market performance, what we end up with is that equities underperformed this year, so the fixed income portion of our portfolio has grown and has become overweighted. So what do we do? We take the overweighted portion, which is 14% of our fixed income now, and we sell that portion off, which is selling high. And then what we do is we buy the portions of the portfolio that were underperforming in that previous year, they're, they're under allocated right now, and we're buying those portions of equities. We're buying US equities and international equities, we're buying low. This is systematically putting in place the discipline to do what you need to do to obey the golden rule of buy low, sell high, without having all of our emotions mixed up in, in the mix. So what we do is we, on January 31st, we sell off the fixed income, we buy our equities that are underweighted, and we end up rebalancing our portfolio back to where we started with a 50-50 mix. That keeps us right in check and keeps us in line. So that was the fund of funds level. Now we want to talk about rebalancing at the investor level because we need to rebalance there too. We need to pay attention. Rebalancing at the account level is affected by account inflows and outflows and market fluctuations. So the two levels of, of rebalancing are monitoring cash coming in and out of the portfolio and multidimensional fund monitoring. So cash monitoring is done, is basically ongoing, but monitored weekly to ensure that it stays within 2% of its target. In the money market portion of your portfolio, if you have withdrawals, if you've made a withdrawal or you've made a deposit and it shows up like you've over allocated or under allocated in the money market portion of your portfolio, that will be systematically rebalanced and put into wherever it's supposed to be, but you won't have all excess money or not enough money sitting in cash. At the fund level, the multidimensional funds are monitored quarterly to ensure that each of the three funds are always within 5% of their respective targets. So if you look at it this way, we have each of our, our funds, we have the US equity, the international equity, and the fixed income fund. Their targets, are 5%, so 30% in equity, US equity, 20% international, 50% in fixed income, including cash. We don't want any of these to get more than 5% off its target one way or the other. So there's actually an acceptable range for each of these. The acceptable range for US equity is from 25% to 35%. The acceptable range for international is 15 to 25. So if we get outside of that range, we're gonna sell off 
or buy more and rebalance so that we're right back where we started. Other things to consider when you're rebalancing is, you know, was your account recently traded on or do you have a systematic contribution or distribution that would allow for your account to be rebalanced later? So if there's something coming up that's already planned into the mix, we're not going to generate another trade that's going to create another transaction if there's already, already one planned. Tax considerations. Can mutual fund sales in your taxable account be limited to reduce the tax consequences? Although we are conscious of taxes, we do not manage for taxes at Mats and Money. So it's something we consider, we take into consideration, but we don't necessarily trade or not trade based on tax consequences. When was your account last rebalanced? If your account has not been rebalanced for the last year or so, then tax considerations become less of a factor and risk man management becomes more compelling, more important, and in this case, rebalancing is more likely to take place because we want to make sure that your risk is where it needs to be. So while rebalancing is about risk management in many periods, oh, yeah, this is really good stuff. <laughs> Sounds a little funny when you're reading off a slide, but I remembered what it's all about. Uh, rebalancing is about risk management in many periods, but rebalancing can add additional return to your portfolio when you need it the most. So looking at one of the most volatile markets in history, rebalancing mitigated losses by maintaining appropriate value uh, portfolio weightings. From January 1st of 2007 to December 31st of 2009, which was an up, down, up market, you know, very drastic, we can see that in all of these portfolios, rebalancing actually gave you some additional return. So in a conservative portfolio, the rebalanced portfolio earned 7.83%. But if it, was not, if it had not been rebalanced, it would have been 6.47. So you got an additional 1.3% return for rebalancing during that time period. If you go to the growth mix, you lost 6.7%. But if you hadn't rebalanced, you would have lost 8.9, saving you nearly two, over 2% 2 in your portfolio just for rebalancing, for doing the right thing at the right time, for being systematic and disciplined. That's huge. Isn't that huge? Because that's at a time period. I mean, that's at a time period when this no is, one was able to buy equities, sell fixed income and buy equities. Right, because our instincts tell us not to do that. We're programmed not to sell what is high. Right. So, you know, this just saved people so much money and made them money. So it's just huge, hugely important. So basically the conclusion is that rebalancing is an effective way to control your risk while continuously and systematically maintaining discipline in your invest and your investment policy. It's crucial as it's extremely difficult, both emotionally and intellectually, to do this on your own. Having a system in place really, really helps take all the emotion out of it and get the job done because this is really what we need to do to make sure that we stay where we, we are and achieve the results we want to achieve. So there we go.